Hey everybody, Jeff Harmon, phototacopodcast.com. In this video, we are going to unbox and assemble a Windows 10 PC. This is the whole computer. It's really small. I've done a ton of computer assembly, but I know a lot of you haven't. So I'm gonna have my son, who's never put together a computer in his life, he's gonna assemble it, because then I know you can too. All right, so this is my son, Britton, and he is going to assemble this computer. Britton, have you ever assembled a computer before? Okay. So just like you, you've never done this before, and we're gonna go do it right now. So first off, it's time to unwrap the Nook. As he's doing that, the thing that's really cool about this Nook is this, the, pro the profile of it. It's very small, but it also has uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is really important for us as photographers to be able to add, uh, expand with storage. We can add really fast storage. It also has a few USB 3.0 ports, so you have peripherals that you can attach that way. It's small, I like that. It's a small profile computer. It's out of the way, it's kind of like a Mac mini. It has a Core i7 processor. That's the kit that I brought. bought. You can definitely go down to like Core i5 and lower, but this is gonna work great especially if we attach it to a 2K. All right, so there's the little little device. You can pick it up out of there. And why don't you show the device off a little bit? Okay. So there in the front, this is the front of it, you've got a USB-C port, which I believe is also going to be a Thunderbolt 3 port. So we're going to we're going to take a look at that and uh, show you how that works. And then here's a USB-A port. So you can see this this one looks like the smaller USB-C style ports, but it's still USB. But because it's USB-C, I think, and we'll validate this in testing, that it's also Thunderbolt 3. Then there's this one that's USB 3.0. We can tell because it's a blue color on the inside. So that's a super speed port and that's going to be really nice. Then you have your headphone speaker jack right out here on the front. Very similar to how a Mac is except the Mac mini doesn't have as many USB ports anymore. Rotate that around to the back. Oh, actually here on the side we have an SD card slot built into the device for SD formatted cards. It's not going to, if you have CF Express or some other kinds of memory cards, that's not going to work, but that's, that's going to be really good for there. And then we have in the back, you have an HDMI, I believe it's 2.0 port so that we can do 4K displays. You have an ethernet jack, you have a couple more of USB-A ports and another Thunderbolt 3 port right here. So those are gonna be super great. This is the power connection. So we have lots of ports and expandability options in a really tiny device. What else is in the box? We have our power brick. This is the only downside. Look at the size of that brick. <laughs> it's really big. Okay, so we're, we're gonna have to plug it in with that. So that, that's great. ready to be powered on, but we're not gonna power it on yet. Okay, what else is in the box? You have, uh, looks like an instruction manual. Probably outlines the ports we just went through. You have some screws. We'll have to, and there's another screw right there, so we'll see what that's all about. More manuals, there's system care, regulatory documentation, and some kind of plate. This is so that you can attach it. It's a vase mount is what it's called. And it's used so that you can, these screws match up to screws that are in um, on the back of a monitor. And you can attach this whole thing to the back of a monitor so that you don't even see the device. It just is hanging off the back of the monitor. We're not gonna do that, but. Okay, this is the memory. Really simple to be able to open that up. We won't take it out yet. Hold on on that. We're gonna have to disassemble the nook a little bit. And then here's the hard drive. There we go. Okay, take that out. There's the hard drive. <laughs> it's a really tiny little thing. It's gonna go inside the computer. All right, we're gonna clear this off and get ready to actually assemble the computer now. Okay, now we're going to install the components. So Britton, turn it over so you can get to the bottom. And we need to undo those four screws. It just will kind of stay in there. So that's good. Just... Okay, I think you're done. Now what does that say, right? Does that say anything? 
It says front. front. So when we put it back on, it has to be that way. Okay, does it come off now? Can you like lift off the? Not yet. It takes a little bit of force to pull it, huh? Is this one not undone? There we go. It wasn't undone all the way. There you go. Pull it out. Okay. Now be careful. <laughs> There's a ribbon there that we don't, we want to make sure we don't undo as we do this. So we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Let's do the memory first. The memory slots are right here and we need to put these in there. So go ahead and pop it out. Try not to touch the gold part of it very much. Your oils on your hand can corrode those. And you, so you, you need to put the gold ends into the socket. So here's, this is the socket. We need to put the gold ends in. It only goes one way. You can see there's a little slot in the middle. You see the slot right here? Let me show you. There's a, there's a, Thing right here and then there's a you can see right there there's a little edge to it mm. you got to match it up which means it has to go that way and do the bottom one first there's two slots there so do the bottom one you kind of edge it in Oop. almost almost got it there push in and then down there you clicked it in it's in and down just make sure. Okay, good. Do the same thing on the other one. Is the slot lining up? Okay, good. In and clicks. Okay, memory installed. <laughs> now we got to put in the hard drive. And it has, let me just explain. So this ribbon cable comes up and goes into what is the hard drive slot. This is for a normal hard drive right here. Um, so we could even expand the storage itself buying a 2.5 inch hard drive that has much more storage space. It would be slower than this, but that would have much more storage space. We could do that, but we're going to install the NVMe drive. That's this socket right here. It actually looks like there may be two sockets. So you could ha actually have two NVMe drives installed in this. I'm trying to see if that's actually two slots or not. Okay, so we're gonna install it. Again, you got to get the gold parts down inside of that. And there's a little slot that it fits into. Yep. And you just kind of push it back and in. Yep. And let it go down. Now we need our screw, that, that other screw that we, need, we had. And before, oh, there's actually one in there already. We need to undo. So remove that out. Just pull that way and undo the screw that's on top. Is it too little? Mm -hmm. We need a smaller yeah. screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this screwdriver head ends up being a little bit too big for that screwdriver. So we're going to use a smaller one. This is a kit I bought for my fix it a, a while ago. I really love the iFixit stuff. And uh, I'm gonna use the zero sized screwdriver head, put it in the screwdriver. There you go, Britton, see if that works a little better. Coming right off now. There you go. Okay, so you might have a little a need for a smaller screwdriver head if you're gonna do this. It's good to know. All right, now install that. And you don't need that yet. You just you're just gonna screw it in after. So install the hard drive. Perfect. Now put that screw back in over the top. Okay, it's in. Now you can reassemble. We may later put a hard drive in here. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, now line up the front to the front. That's why I pointed that out at the beginning. Where's the front, Britton? Right there. So line up the arrow of the front to the front. Okay, and make sure you push down, get it in there. Okay, now you can just use your hand and screw in and Perfect. It's assembled. Now it's time to turn it on.
This is the SanDisk flash drive that I recommend you buy. I, I like the SanDisk uh, branded flash drives. I think they're very high quality. I have had some fail, but all flash drives fail. So, you know, it, you can buy whatever you want, but this is the one that I'll put in the description. Um, you don't need a 128 gig drive for this. It can be much smaller, 64, even 32 is gonna work. But the idea behind why to do this to me is that um, it's not much more money. It's it's slightly more at uh, eighteen ninety nine to buy it, but it's also but it's still going to be reusable when you're done. Like you're going to need it for a little bit here to do this install, and it's going to completely erase everything that is on this flash drive. If you have one laying around, go ahead and use it. That's just fine. But do recognize it is going to fully erase whatever is on your flash card. So back it up first if you. You need to. Uh, so the idea is 128 gig here. This is a really fast one. And so that's the reason to buy this one, this exact model. It's going to be very reusable when you're done. And you'll be able to expand your storage space by 128 gig. You could put like a Lightroom catalog on there. You can put a lot of photos on there. It's a nice way to be able to expand your storage for a very inexpensive cost. I'll put a link in the description of the video for that. With that, then you need to, when you're done with it, you need to buy Windows. You have to buy a license of Windows for it. You can go directly to Microsoft. I'll put the link in the description here to go buy it. I do recommend Windows 10 Pro over Windows 10 Home for photographers for one reason. It's not really a feature set thing. It is that you can delay the install of Windows upgrades if you have Windows 10 Pro. And that to me is worth the extra cost. It's about uh, $40 more to get pro versus home. And it's worth it to me to be able to delay upgrades and uh, install upgrades when I have, uh, have passed that. Um, then you have an option to buy it straight from, uh, not straight from, from Amazon. You can buy it from Amazon and it's, Funny enough, it is about $20 cheaper buying it through Amazon than buying it from directly from Microsoft. So this is a download only. If you would rather get a USB drive sent to you that has the install on it, that is the same cost as Microsoft, and you can just do USB, and they'll ship you a USB that has the, the, uh, the bits on it, and you don't have to buy your own drive or create one. But I'm going to show you how to do it yourself, save a little bit of money, you can save 20 bucks, and uh, and be able to to uh, to do this a little cheaper. So you just hit add to cart, go buy it, and what it does is it puts this as a uh, a downloadable software title in your Amazon account. So it just puts a valid Windows key into your Amazon account. It doesn't even let you download it here. To do that, you have to go to this other tab. I will also put in the description. You have to create Windows 10 installation media, and there's this tool. If you click this button. It has you download something called the media creation tool that allows you to do the rest of this process. And right here is the instructions actually of what you need. If I click that and expand it, it's a lot of instructions about what you can do, how do you get the product keys, how do you download it, and so on. But I'm gonna walk you through the process right now. I have the tool installed. This is what it looks like when you come up after some initial setup things and you accept an agreement. It comes up to this. We, I don't want to upgrade this PC. I want to create installation media using my USB flash drive to, uh, to make an install. So I'm going to do that. You select which one. You don't want it recommended based on the computer that you, have, you are using, but we do want 64-bit. The machine I have is a 64-bit computer. That's what the Intel Nook is, is a 64-bit. Almost everything today is. Uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to find something that's not 64-bit. So those are the options. It didn't really change anything, but if you are using a Windows 10 machine or a Windows computer that is 32-bit, it, it might default to something else. We want these three settings set this way. So now I'm gonna hit next. I want to do this to a USB flash drive and it notes here, eight gigabytes of storage. So if you have one laying around that's at least eight gigabytes, you can use it. Just remember it's going to erase whatever is on the drive. So I'm gonna hit next. And these are my two options. These are my external drives. I'm gonna use that drive N is the drive that I put in here. And now it is starting to download the ISO of what it needs. This is going to take a minute, so we will fast forward through this process. Depends on uh, you know your download speeds of how how fast this happens. All right, and there it is. We're done with the USB flash drive creation. It is ready. I can just hit finish. 
It's going to do a little bit of cleanup, but we're ready to switch back to uh, the uh, to go back to the NUC and install Windows 10 onto the NUC. All right, so I want to show you that we have the processor is, that came in it. Of course, I didn't put this in, so of course it's going to see that. But I went with the Intel i7-10710U CPU. has a base clock of 1.1 gigahertz, which is pretty slow by today's standard. But you can see the turbo is 4.7 gigahertz. So we should be able to get quite a bit above that 1.1 kind of base clock. And non-turbo is 1.6 gigahertz, but still all of this is very much fast enough for Lightroom and Photoshop to be able to have it work well for those applications. Uh, export might be a little bit slower with a system like this, but I'm gonna test that and I'll tell you exactly how it's gonna be. We also have 64 gigabytes of memory. You can see right there it's installed, running at 2667 megahertz, and we have both, it, it sees the two sticks, two 32 gig sticks of RAM. So that's good. Now if we go advanced and over to storage, we can see that we have our Samsung SSD drive, the 970 Pro 512 gigabytes. So everything that we installed in the computer is being seen. Now it's time to install the operating system. Okay, and here we are into Windows. It's all done. What We skipped the setup of Windows 10 install where you chose like your account creation, your security questions for your account, and uh, your privacy settings of what stuff you're willing to share with Microsoft or turning it all off. That's all up to you. Uh, you know, you can decide what you're going to do there. But now we have a full Windows install. And if I bring up like File Explorer, you can see I have my main, main drive here. A local disk C is 512 gig of storage. And we have the USB drive that's still mounted in the computer system that has a lot of storage space available to it. So there you go. It's all ready to go. Now we're ready to install Lightroom and Photoshop or whatever else you might want on the machine. Stay tuned for more testing results of what I'm going to have on phototacopodcast.com about how well this performs compared to other machines with more hardware, more equipment, and seeing how Lightroom and Photoshop runs on it.